Hi and uh, welcome to my channel. So I'm going to give you a real quick preview of what this video is all about. In the first picture you're going to see the first version of my hydraulic thumb, which unfortunately only lasted about half an hour of actual work. And that's what you see here. I uh, kind of destroyed it by uh, pulling a tree sideways. So that wasn't a very happy, not a very happy moment for sure. Um, then you can see that uh, I rebuilt it for the second version and uh, it worked really really well worked with it quite a bit uh, loaded a huge pile of uh, roots and then all of a sudden halfway through it just bent the hydraulic cylinder just like a wet noodle it was really incredible to watch so that's what you see in this picture here and uh, what I ended up having to do is go back to Princess Auto and get a new hydraulic cylinder recut it and re-weld it back together and that's why you can see in the very last picture the cylinder is red it was getting too cold uh, for me to paint it and I wanted to get it going so we can uh, cut the siding for the for the cabin so that's the preview of this video and uh, I hope you're gonna enjoy watching it uh, don't forget to subscribe and like and comment if you have any suggestions love to hear from you all right so this is how far I got with the uh, thumb and I built one out of wood and uh, matched it and uh, so now I'm just going to have to figure out how to do the, uh, the pieces across here to make them a little bit more strong. And then uh, in here, I'll probably need two pieces of wood or I guess metal eventually with holes for the pin. Um, and then I'll have to go and get a hydraulic cylinder that has about 36 inches stroke if I can find one for a reasonable price but yeah this is how far I got so here's the hydraulic cylinder that I bought for the thumb and it's actually quite a big uh, one it's a 36 inch stroke so I think it's 40 45 inches uh, when it's when it's uh, retracted and 80 inches when it's long so the issue I ran into is I thought that it was too long um, and so what I did is I actually used some quarter inch hardboard and make up a shorter one. So this one here is a 30 inch stroke. And this one here is the one that I have, the 36 inch stroke. Now the 30 inch stroke would work, but it would only give me about a 90 degree angle on the thumb. And I don't think it's quite enough. So I moved the pivot point a little bit and I'm going to take this one and see what it looks like when it's on the uh, on the wooden model that I built there last night. Okay, so this is how far I got. I had to make a little adjustment because I didn't like the fact that uh, it was going four inches down, so I reduced it down to two. And uh, here you can see the different positions. If it's completely retracted, the red is going to be the piston position, and when it's completely extended, the green is the uh, position and uh, I test fitted it and it works uh, the only thing I don't really like is that I have to weld two plates together one here and one here because I don't have material that's wide enough and that's this long so I have some uh, 7 8 inch thick by 4 inch uh, and I think it's 7 feet long so I'm just going to have enough to uh, make the two long pieces and then take one piece and cut it in half for the bottom part because I'm going to have to weld those together. But uh, I think it's going to work. I guess we'll, uh, we'll do some more fitting tomorrow and uh, then start cutting up the metal and start welding it up. So I have to make another modification because I uh, forgot to take into the account the little knob here and the fitting that sticks out. Now the Princess Auto, um, unfortunately, uh, the knob, the fitting here is perpendicular to this one, whereas it was, it would be a lot nicer if it was on the side. So this is what I got. Here's the, uh, here's the little flange there, and this is the fitting that I'm going to put in. So I have to get here. Let me see if I can uh, show that from the top there. So I have to give it enough clearance uh, for the retraction of the cylinder, so that uh, I don't hit I don't hit the uh, the wall there. So as before, 
this is where I was going to have the, the half inch bottom plate and now I'm going to have to move it to here. So this is where I'm at. I'm going to fix it in the wood model and I'm probably going to redo the entire wood model, make it a little bit more accurate and build it exactly the way I want it to do a uh, final test fit and then start cutting up the metal. Okay, so I think this is the final version now. I uh, did it all out of new wood and the right dimensions of what I have on hand. The only thing I'm not sure is this piece here is only half inch, but it's not very long. It's only about this long where it's not, where it's only half an inch and it's really wide, so I think it should be good. Um, then the bottom, this is also half inch, but because it's angled, um, I think that'll be strong enough. The sides are 7 8 inch. And then I just added uh, pieces here at the end. Here, I'll lift this up just to get a little bit more hooking power there. And uh, as for the hydraulic cylinder, I made up a cardboard uh, template. And I think this is going to be where the pivot will be, right up there. And because I can't make it uh, extendable, I cut a slot in here. And so I should be able to, oops, should be able to simulate the uh, movement of the hydraulic cylinder as I move this up. So you can see the, the cylinder moves back and forth as it extends and that's a pretty decent range I'm pretty happy with uh, with that and then all the way to the top here here's the top and I'm not extend I'm not uh, pulling it back completely you can see this is how far it would actually go but I'm only pulling it that much so it's, there's about three quarter inch of the rod that's going to stick out and the inside, I made it so that it does not hit the sides. The only thing I'm going to have to do is make a, a bushing here and then a new pin. That's about uh, an inch longer or so. There you go. So I think that turned out pretty good. I think I'm getting ready to start cutting it up with my, uh, like cutting up the metal. So here I am cutting off the warp piece of that piece of metal that I'm using for the long uh, pieces. This is a... Uh, this is what I'm cutting right now, 7 8 by 4 inch, and I'm going to make them 38 inches long. And that should only take a minute. So I'm going to do a real quick interjection here. Uh, in this picture you can see that the uh, piece of wrought iron that I was cutting up uh, just previously uh, had just snapped right in half um, because apparently wrought iron is not nearly as strong as mild steel when it comes to the brittleness. Um, I learned that the hard way. Now I have to say I was a little expecting it when I was first cutting it up uh, to the uh, effect of actually going to share this with my wife and say look I'm taking a chance here uh, it may result in a bunch of work uh, later on if this uh, wrought iron is not going to be strong enough but I did design it in a way that I could cut it out and replace it which I ended up having to do unfortunately so anyways back to the uh, to the video so the metal parts are almost done and as you can tell it created quite a bit of dirt on the floor there from all the grinding um, so here are the pieces and I have two sets of course and then these are the braces across and now I'm working on these here which then will fit in right there like that there we go and uh, this is what I'm doing right now drilled it to half an inch and I'm going to drill it all the way to an inch and then bore it to I think it's two and an eighth inch for the pin I'll have to double check that but that's how far I got so far it is uh, quarter to eleven at night okay so this is how far I got done I got everything tack welded together I got the pin made that was that took a long time and uh, test fitted it so now these are still loose here I'm going to tack weld those in and right now I'm cutting up some 4140 for, uh, for bushing for the bottom and the top of the hydraulic cylinder. They're going to go right in there. I'm going to press fit them in there. So uh, 
coming along. It's a lot of work, but it's coming along. So I uh, just finished making these bushings. I decided to go with 4140 and uh, press fit it into the flange where the pin rides for the for the cylinder. I didn't want to use just a one inch mild steel plate because I figured that would be a little soft. So here I am. These are the flanges I'm going to drill them out and then I'm going to bore them to the 1.9 inches that I made for the outside diameter and then the pin goes inside and I'm press fitting this into the, uh, the flanges there and that should be good. Okay, so I've got the bottom pivot flanges done, uh, one inch steel and then on the inside I use the two inch outside diameter 4140 and uh, I hardened it and I made it oversized like two thousandths and then I heated up the uh, the mild metal uh, around it and I press fit it all in and now I'm starting on the top pivot so this is the wood model that I'm gonna have to make and uh, I cut up some one inch plate and uh, you can see I had to weld a whole bunch of other pieces on there to make it balanced you can tell it's, it's nice and balanced it actually it uh, spins well. I tack welded it all together. Made a couple of uh, feet for the jaws to grab onto, and I made sure that I welded it well, so it should not fly off. I sure hope it won't. I'll bring you back when I'm done with this. Okay, so the top mount is done. Just tack welded it right now because I want to fit it and then make sure that it works. But uh, it looks good. Alright, I can't believe I'm actually doing this. I have to cut the pivot off because this knob here is at a 90 degree, but I need it to be that way. So, I'm just going to have to cut this off and then turn it and then weld it back on. And that way, I, this knob and the hose is not going to get in the way. I hope this works. Okay, so this is where I'm at. I did install the top and I tack welded the pivot point. So that way the fitting can get out of the way because uh, um, the back was just right down, down that way. And if I had it sticking out, it would go too far and it would get in, into this way. So I twisted it. You can see it's like about a 67 degrees and I was kind of maybe a little bit nervous that the bottom wouldn't fit because originally it was pointing straight out this way and I had made accommodations for enough room here so now I guess I don't need that anymore um, but it's still going to be out of the way of the of this as it flips up and down so I'm good alright so now all I gotta do is weld the uh, tack weld the top to the backhoe and then install the thumb and then install the bottom pin and then tack weld the bottom flanges and then I should be able to test it maybe with some air another update as you can tell it's night this is a whole day later uh, I got the thumb installed and the hydraulics run and hooked up. This is the T I'm feeding into. Um, I still have to do the uh, actual management. Some clamps here and some sleeves and tie it all together. But uh, it works. Looks great. What an incredible amount of work this is. I just finished uh, the locking mechanism so I can put a one inch steel bar through to lock this in place so that I can uh, unlock the uh, extend boom and then uh, if I lock the extend the hole then uh, I can use the thumb so it turned out alright I gotta finish the cables tonight and then give it a paint of coat it's uh, 11 o'clock at night and I'm probably going to be three or four more hours and then a full day worth of uh, renovations tomorrow for my brother-in-law so 
Yay, what a crazy project. Holy crap. And my wife is awesome to put up with me. And she's watched the kids for like five days straight. I've hardly seen them. So I figured I probably would have put in about 90 hours of work into this, uh, into this thumb. Holy crap. Okay, so the hydraulic thumb is done and painted. So here's the main pivot point. It's about two and an eighth inch diameter and I have 34 inches of length with a locking mechanism here. And this is the hole for the pivot at the bottom. Then here's the uh, grease nipple for the top pin. And then for the hydraulic, I actually ended up having to twist it about 45 degrees so that I could clear it over here and mostly clear it over that way. So then the hoses come up and one goes to the other side and one follows along. So this configuration goes around and then back here, then around here into that T that I tried into the extended boom. So the lock for the extended boom is right down here. So if I keep this locked, then the thumb is going to operate. If I lock the thumb and unlock the extender boom, then that one's going to operate with the foot pedal. Now the other side is pretty much the same. The hose comes up here. I ended up having to weld a, another mounting bracket here on top of this. And then use some of these uh, protectors. Coils all the way around. And then here I welded an angle bracket where I could put an extra mount on top to, to tie this down solid and then goes into the T over here. So, after about 85 or 90 hours, this thing is finally done, and it works, and I'm gonna turn it on and show you how it looks. All right, I'm going to take another quick break here to uh, to explain what I think happened, what I think is the cause of the uh, hydraulic cylinder bending there towards the end. Um, you'll notice that I slowed down uh, extending the, uh, the cylinder rod there quite a bit towards the end just because I noticed that the cylinder casing there would hit the boom. And it was only about two inches um, too far, but I think what happened is I extended it too far and that ended up bending the uh, the rod just a tiny little bit and have maybe a bit of a preset uh, bent uh, that way. And so later on when I was uh, loading up the roots, I think that tiny little bend in the, the piston rod ended up uh, just be too much. And when I applied the force of the, the hydraulics, uh, it just bent it like a wet noodle. I mean, it was like bent like this. It was not a pretty sight. So anyways, um, I think that's what happened. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, I'm pretty sure that is the reason. So I ended up putting a stop tube inside of the cylinder um, with on the cylinder that I replaced and uh, that will prevent the, the rod from extending too far and the same thing from happening again. Anyways, back to the video. So here's an update on my thumb. It took me 80 hours to build and about half an hour to destroy. This is uh, after I've cut some pieces out already, but basically what happened, I pulled a tree sideways, which I have, and uh, the wrought iron just 
snapped. So that really sucks. So anyway, so I took it off. I designed it to be taken off and uh, brought it back home to my shop and uh, cut those pieces off, which are these here, and re-welded some of them. There's a couple of, there's one, or cr one crack here and uh, there was one back here, right there. So I re-welded those and then I adapted it a little bit cut everything out so this is all I'm gonna have for the uh, the pin for the hydraulic cylinder all the clearances should fit so now all I'm gonna have to do is uh, put in another piece right here and then get some real iron that actually doesn't snap and uh, fit it in like this and then weld these back on and this time what I'm gonna do I'm actually gonna take this pipe here, not quite sure what it is. It's probably like a three inch piece and I'm gonna fit it in between the ends there to give a little bit extra stability. Hopefully, oh, another thing I'm gonna do is uh, this is just half inch plate and it actually bent right here. So I'm gonna put another half inch plate on top of that and weld it all together. That should give it some extra strength and hopefully that'll work. So I got the metal for the fixing of the thumb and uh, here it is, a whole bunch of stuff and here's the old thumb and so what I did is I actually ended up uh, cutting it out and uh, getting it back to the pieces that are working. This one's good, this one here's good and this one here was good so I welded a new piece on the side. <coughs> And uh, just finished tracing out the new pieces. I'm going to double up on these ones here. So what I did is I took a piece of paper and I lined it up and I cut it out so that I have enough uh, room for the, the welding bead here. Then I transferred it over. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to use an angle grinder or if I'm going to have a metal shop use a, a plasma cutter on this. I might just get them to do it. We'll see how long it would take them. And that's where we're at. So back to building up the thumb. Hopefully I'll have that up and running in a few hours. And uh, back on the backhoe. Catch you later. Thumb all fixed up and welded. Uh, here's the bigger piece that I put in. And this time I'm cutting some teeth too. If you look at it from this angle, you can see it's kind of curved. So the top one's done. And the way I did it is I drilled the holes and then the angle. So down here you can actually see this is what I got so far. Um, I marked it on the other side. So now all I got to do is uh, cut it this way and then here and then here and these and then that's done. The last thing I'm going to need, actually a couple more things I need to do. I'm going to put in something in between here to strengthen it up and then I have these big pieces that I cut up that are going to go over top and I'll have to cut the holes out and I'm going to weld them all the way around so that should these two pieces will never rip apart again and then I gotta make two of these little latches that I can uh, weld um, down by the backhoe uh, to lock it up and then I should be done and hopefully this disaster has been fixed so it's coming along and it's version 2 and I think it'll be better than before Alright, so here's the thumb, finally done and painted. Here's the brackets that I'm still going to have to weld to it. But, uh, mean looking teeth in here, I think that's going to make it a lot easier to, to use. And uh, everything's replaced. And uh, the big bracket on the side put in. And the pin goes right through there. So, it, uh, it sure would have been nicer if I didn't break it in the first place, but I uh, was able to fix it, and uh, tomorrow I'm going to go and put it back on the backhoe, and then I'm ready to go.